when I came here in the, in the 60s, it was a very strange thing. I, I've got limited time, but when I write that book and you all buy a copy, you'll see exactly what my life's been about and the reason why I was here. But quite quickly, oh, hello, my two beauties. Ah. <laughs> I, I've got your roses back there. Yeah. And anyway, um, what it was, a quick recap is that I actually was on the verge of running away from home. Because the idea was, although I was an early leaver school, because I went to college early, in my early years, and could then qualified out, and my mother said, when I heard her speaking to my daddy, she said, look, I want you to have a word with your boss so that he can give me a job. And the first thing I thought, there's no way I'm going to work with my old man or near him. So uh, he's a lovely man. But, and I was pondering about running away from home, getting myself a job, working my way through university. And, then, yeah. and on that day, I used to take a lot of examination, but my parents didn't know about it because I paid for it out of my pocket money. And my sis, one of my sisters, <coughs> eight of them, uh, came charging in and said, oh my, uh, you, you're going to Gloucestershire. <laughs> and I thought, and then everybody was screaming and patting me, back, and then I took the telegram from it, and I just said, thank God. Because in one fair soup, the dear Lord have relieved me of a lot of problems. I didn't have to break my parents' heart by running away. And I thanked the dear Lord for that. And this is a true story. But when I came to, 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 to this country, as I stepped off the plane, the first thing I thought was, good grief, it's just like when it gets very hot at home, you open the, 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 the front of the ice box, frig, refrigerated to you, and that cool here. No, that was in August. <laughs> now, if we're in August, and, you know, and I thought, well, you know something, I'm here now, and that's it. Now, that... I'm here now, and that's it, was what set the tone. Because like a lot of people that came over before me, the true, what I call the true Windrush generation, who did the hard work, that's exactly what they said. Look, this is a hostile environment. Uh, I'm talking about the weather now. We'll talk about the rest <laughs> later on. And what, what happened, you know, it was just not tropical, let's put it, put it that way. And so what we decided, you know, it's going to be hard. No, I was only just over 14 then. But I decided there was no turning back. I was not going to write to my mom, thank God there was no internet then, and say, I want to come home, or will you help me? I had to face everything on my own. And looking back now, I thought for a 14-year-old to be thinking that way, he must have been desperately wanting to get away from his parents. <laughs> Uh, so that was it. But it, it was wonderful because, in a way, it was like a big adventure. Thank God I didn't know. I was ignorant of the social situation here. I was totally ignorant because we thought that the streets were paved with gold. The London bobbies were glorious, helpful, etc. Oh, wasn't I disappointed when I stopped in London? That's why I hate London. Three days I stopped there, and uh, the first person I asked the question was a London Bobby. And he stuck his nose in and walked on. Three ladies, good morning, same thing. And unfortunately, it wasn't Donald Trump, but it was an American. I was looking around, and he, he said, can I help you, man, you know? And I said, yes, I would like to get a Kensington tall. And he took me down the road quite a way, and he showed me. And I thought, that's strange. So I was in a bit of a whirl. But the good part was, when I finally came to, to Gloucestershire, uh, oh, Gloucester, Gloucester, and they picked, picked me up at the train station and took me to this fantastic, one of the best firms in the world, here in Gloucester, Fielding and Platt. You, where, where the market is, not the, um, not the whatever. And I met the first bit of what you call um, not so nice uh, attitude, but I did not know. However, to say that I was treated badly by them, 
I wasn't. I ended up having what I call 300 fathers, because my f real father died shortly after I got there. I had over 300 fathers, and heaven knows how many mothers, and all that. And that was the, uh, Mr. Carlton Green, he worked there as well. I didn't meet him there because of record. But these are the things that I would face. But when I came outside, now I heard a lot of elder, uh, colored or black or whatever they, call, they want to call themselves, I don't care. My family is like the United Nations, thank God. Um, uh, you know, they, they're gripes. Their discontentment without the attitudes they had to face. But one thing that came true that regardless of what they were suffering, they always wanted one thing, and that was to ensure that their kids had a better life. And that was it. Now, I go back to the point where in this country, the, shall we say, the working class were treated pretty badly as well. Now, this is where I, I get a bit confused because working class, he, of indigenous working class, and people coming over from what was then the, 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 the colonies, British colonies who were British and were quite happy to wave a flag, why didn't they get together and understand each other where each other had come from? But you see, that's a part of humanity, isn't it? People are dissatisfied with the situation. And sometimes to relieve their frustration, they take it out on anything that's different. Also, there was a lot of ignorance. Absolutely a lot of ignorance. So in the end, we found that people, a lot of people didn't actually want to treat the, um, let's say, colored or black or West Indian the way they wanted. It was just that they were told things and brought up in a certain way to believe certain things. But I found that, and I, I, I'm not ashamed to say it, that some of the best people I have encountered were actually the Caucasian or white or whatever you may want to call it. And I'm not afraid to say that. A short, quick story, because I'm sure if, uh, you're short of time. But one of the things that used to be said to me at work, or not to me, was said at work when they're talking about general these foreigners coming here and doing all that. They always seemed to turn, it always turned to me and said, we don't mean you, Lynn. Uh, it's them others. <laughs> and that hit me because I couldn't figure what about these others. And bit by bit, it got through to me. And I then started to feel insecure because I'm thinking, hang on a minute. What's so different about me? And it, it really made me feel uh, bad. But there is a, I don't know if he's here, there's a gentleman that I used to hear his name mentioned often, and that's, I hope he's here, Mr. Horton Cameron. A lot of uh, you might have heard his name because he, they've done a lot of things in Gossip as a mayor of Barton, etc., etc. And I used to hear his name, but it was, you know, everybody. Kind of, and I thought, I would like to meet that person. And on the day that I actually, first time I met him, I, I thought, oh my God, he's colored. <laughs> and uh, w which just shows to you what the situation was like. It gets to us in there. Not just to me being on the other side of the fence, but to people on the Caucasian side of the fence as well. And this is what we got. So technically, Back home, when there's an hurricane, we don't depend on the government because they act too slowly. We rely on our neighbors. When the other day, when the Windrush situation started, we found, formed a group in Gloucester called the Windrush Connection. And all the policies we, we had to take this for the celebration, we, it was not heard by uh, coming from the government. So the government actually... <coughs> um, playing catch-up. What, what, what I'm say, saying that is, if you, as a citizen of Gloucester, all of you here, all of your friends and whatever, get together, decide, I'm a human being, you're a human being, treat each other in a, with a, a degree of respect and expect it to, you to be treated like that as well. You can put, by example, force the government to do 
what's right instead of waiting for them to make it. Like we put them there, they should do what we want for our betterment, not for, you know, to make a policy because it looks good and I'll get so many votes after. You know, look at the, <coughs> Don, did I say Donald Trump? Sorry about that. <laughs> but, you know, and these are the things that happen. Oh, ah, Brexit. Oh, don't start <laughs> me on that one. Oh, no, I refuse. I, I refuse to mention Brexit. But that again well, brings us nicely, thank you very much, to a situation out of the field. Now, a lot of people are disenchanted with Europe, being in the European Union, although there's a great deal of good coming from the European Union to our benefit, all right? But you wanted to leave because you were not happy. And there are people who said, for example, Jamaica and these colonies should not have seek their independence. Now, why was the reason why you did not want to be in the European anymore? Because you wanted your freedom or you wanted better condition, better situation. That's why you, you, you went for Brexit or the, the country went for Brexit on a, on a democratic level. And these are the same reasons why uh, when you're taking slavery, the various ways uh, that we have this country, uh, these are the reasons why people want to leave. So we just got to respect other people's decision, right? And go on and say, okay, you've done that, you've done that, and then get on and say, where's the compromise? Where can we all live together? And get on, because at the end of the day, if China keeps putting those coal-fired power station on board, and we keep taxing our lot to keep the thing cleaner, the, the environment will never become clean. So we all got to work together. You know, I'm going to stop here now because I know a lot of people want to get on and do things, and I'm not going to tell you about the time I jumped out of the Aki tree with a plastic bag because I thought it was a parachute. So <laughs> anyway, <laughs> just before I go, I've got to say, there are two young ladies here. Uh, the two young ladies here who I think does a fantastic job in making that link uh, between all the races, all the nation, all the society. Okay, so I am going to write a book because sometimes I got too much here to say. So, okay, thank you very much. <laughs>